Yo, what up? Welcome to another episode of the Oakland Warriors podcast. I'm Patrick, and the Warriors just smacked the hell out of the Orlando Magic 126 to 95. It's good to get a blowout victory. I'll be honest, though, this game, they started slow, as they often do, and it kind of felt like, oh, we're going to have another letdown game. But eventually, I mean, the Magic, they're just a young team, and the Warriors just eventually just kept coming at them and coming at them, and the lead kept building and building. And there were a couple of places where the Magic made runs, but eventually it just got way out of hand, and Hey, take the victory, you know? All is right with the world. It was a good effort from everybody overall. Jordan Poole, he didn't shoot that great once again, but he was plus 22 and had seven assists and seven boards. Steph, the universe revolves around him, and he had 31 on seven for 13 from three, eight for 16 overall. He's getting really close to passing Ray Allen, which is nuts to me considering how many fewer games he's played than Ray Allen and the fact that Steph missed pretty much a whole season with that broken hand. I mean, literally, he could have done this like a year ago if it weren't for that. But that being said, he'll probably do it in Philly or maybe Indiana. But my main thing about this game was, man, once again, thank you, Minnesota Timberwolves. Andrew Wiggins had a career night from three. The dude was eight for 10. He tied his career high and he had 28 points, nine for 17 overall, plus 18 on the night. And Jonathan Kaminga back from a G League stint. I've been wanting Kaminga minutes for a very long time. I thought he would have been great to see in the Suns games and especially in the Spurs game when the Warriors were lacking some energy. But he got in and he played pretty much the whole fourth quarter, I think. He played 12 minutes. He was four for seven, 0 for one from three, nine points, three boards, plus 12, and a couple of really nice dunks. He had that massive follow up, which I mean, his head pretty much just about at the rim. And his athleticism is insane. Steve Kerr had him guarding on ball full court. Pretty much, maybe three quarters court. But regardless, he was on, I think it was maybe RJ Hampton. And then on the other end, I think he was being guarded by Wendell Carter at certain points. Talked about this when Kaminga was in the rotation a few weeks ago. And it's still impressive to me that the dude can guard pretty much one through five, depending on how big the five is and how quick the one is. And the dude, I love his demeanor on the court. He never looks overwhelmed by anything. He knows he belongs. I mean, that dude is confident. He's got to have a good amount of cockiness in him. And, you know, you just love to see that. Those were the two pieces that the Warriors got for D'Angelo Russell. And every game, (laughs) every time we see these dudes produce, it's like, Wow. It was debatable for a while when the Warriors weren't playing well the last couple seasons. It was debatable whether or not D'Angelo Russell or Andrew Wiggins was a better player, right? Wiggins was terrible for Minnesota and D'Angelo Russell in his half season was just, I mean, tough to watch. Like his style of play just was not aesthetically pleasing and it didn't fit with the Warriors at all. But then you just throw Jonathan Kaminga on top of that and it just tilts the scales immensely, right? I personally already thought it was won by the Warriors. You go talk to some Minnesota fans, and just for the sheer fact that they couldn't stand, they were so frustrated with Andrew Wiggins, they're more than happy to give him up. But when you include Kaminga in this equation, it, I mean, the kid's 19 years old. He has all the physical tools and the willingness to learn and be great. And he has a maturity seemingly beyond his years at this point. I said this soon after the draft, I did a solo episode and I was like, I think Jonathan Kaminga is going to be the best player in that trade. And to be honest, like, I don't think that's a wild statement. You can see it right now, just the potential oozing, right? D'Angelo Russell is just, you know, he is what he is. And Andrew Wiggins is an excellent complimentary piece, but Jonathan Kaminga That dude has a chance to be a top-tier star. A long way to go, but 
in the right environment, which I think the Warriors are that environment. And with all the tools and skills and mental makeup, I think he can possibly pull it off. That's why I've been high on him and everybody that's been on this show has pretty much been high on him from before the draft, at least going back to the G League season last year. And in terms of Andrew Wiggins, I like that dude. He seems to be really, really clicking and finding his groove with this team, especially this year. You know, like this team is playing well. There's way more dudes who can score. And I said it a couple episodes ago, when he got traded to the Warriors, everybody talked about how he would benefit from Steph's gravity. And he is. I mean, his threes are usually really wide open. He's just on the wing waiting, catch and shoot. That's it. I mean, there was one nice one where he kind of took a step back three and nailed it. That might have been his a three-pointer of the night. But he doesn't have to work that hard to get his shots. He just has to make them. Ever since that Minnesota game, I mean, there have been a few games where the Warriors haven't played well in general, right? Like the Phoenix game in Phoenix and the Charlotte game. But ever since that Minnesota game, Wiggins has been playing really, really well. He knows his role and he just does that role. He's a better shooter than Harrison Barnes was when Harrison Barnes was in Golden State. He's definitely not Kevin Durant, but if he can, he's not going to shoot eight for 10 every game, but you'll take his energy and he's fighting. He's still fighting. He's tough on defense and he's fighting for rebounds and he's getting in the paint. So these are all the things that we've wanted from him since he got here. These are things that, you know, (laughs) Timberwolves fans wanted from him when he got drafted. But at least in this case, he doesn't have to shoulder a major, major load. Who knows? Maybe he just doesn't do well with that pressure. And maybe his game isn't suited to be a number one, number two option. Number three, number four, and depending on who's on the court, maybe number five. I mean, that's nice. And when you think about this team, it was nice to see them kind of just get their mojo back after a while, you know? And just the defensive ability. You have defensive specialists on this team and not even specialists. You just have guys who can play defense and are willing to. A lineup of Draymond Green, Andrew Wiggins, JTA, Gary Payton II. And, I mean, you could throw John the Kaminga in there, Otto Porter Jr. Those guys all play D really well. And of course, Steph is playing, you know, the best defense of his career right now. Otto Porter Jr., again, did not have a good shooting night. He missed all four of his shots, all three of his threes. But just as soon as he kind of slips a little bit, Nemanja Bialica, four for five, two for three, three boards, 10 points. Nice, nice. Football fans, I'm sure we all love an action-packed, high-scoring NFL game, but with the latest no-brainer from DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, you'll be a winner once a single point scored. New customers who bet just $1 on any team to score can win $100 in free bets. It's that simple. If Sportsbook isn't available in your state yet, you can still get in on the NFL action. Everyone can play for huge cash prizes all season long with DraftKings Daily Fantasy Sports Contests. DraftKings is giving all new customers a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes with their first deposit. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now, use promo code TBPN, bet $1 on any team to score, and win $100 in free bets. If they score, you score with promo code TBPN this week at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Minimum $5 deposit and $1 wager required. One per customer. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. And I know after the past week of two losses, some of these games were rough and the Warriors didn't look like themselves in that one trap game. And they didn't look like themselves in that Suns game, that first one. But again, this team is missing major pieces. Let's not have any knee-jerk reactions to just one or two games and start trading for people. I know sometimes that's just fodder. And I know that a quarter through the season, that's when all the teams in the league kind of look at themselves and all the prognosticators are like, okay, who can move where? And yeah, I think there are guys that should get moved, but not on this team, not yet. See how they look with Clay Thompson, with James Wiseman. 
You know, I've talked about this solo. I've talked about this with Aram. I've talked about this with Jose Vubang. You don't want to start unloading guys just for the hell of it. You know, like when the chatter of Bradley Beal came up again, it's like, oh, come on. Let's not make any weird trades at all. Yeah, and John the Kaminga, man, that guy is super athletic. He is as advertised. And again, he just needs to work on polishing his game. He needs to work on his shot. It doesn't look broken. He can hit free throws, although he's not super consistent yet because that dude is going to get fouled like crazy. That's a dude who can get to the bucket. When we're talking about, oh, the Warriors should trade for somebody to get to the bucket, maybe not. (laughs) You know, (laughs) maybe not. If you want to trade the future for Bradley Beal's contract, I think you're crazy because to me, you got Jordan Poole. You have Kaminga. This team is going to look drastically. Any problems the Warriors have right now, any questions that they have, you can't answer them fully until you see this team. This team is going to look drastically different once Clay comes back, once Wiseman comes back, once Andre Godala gets healthier. Look at this team in February, March, April. Once Kaminga can give you some legit minutes nonstop, when he doesn't need any more G League stints, when he's earned Steve Kerr's trust enough to play rotation minutes again. Even Moody, Moses Moody, he'll be able to get thrown out there sometimes. So when the Warriors need a bucket, when things get tight, I'm not saying that Jonathan Kaminga is going to show up in the Western Conference Finals and just go to the rack and start scoring like 20 points a game. But he's somebody that I don't think you'd write off at this point as like a critical piece towards the end of the season. The dude's mature. And as long as he plays defense, makes good decisions, everything else he does in the flow is perfect. Yes, he'll miss shots, but get into the basket, those spin moves, those drop steps, those step backs in the lane, those mid-range shots, those will be helpful. You know, last week I talked about, you know, that chatter about, oh, maybe Miles Turner for James Wiseman. And, you know, I get that. But I don't want to do that. Uh, You know, I'm a big Wiseman fan and I want to see him first. But any trade that would involve Kaminga is off the table. No way in hell they're going to trade that guy. It would have to be some insane, crazy offer that guarantees championships like five years in a row. Aram in Toronto and I talked about Jonathan Kaminga and his potential. We think he's going to be the best Warriors player in maybe like four years. Doesn't mean he's not going to help now, but that's how good he can be. Maybe three years. Who knows? And just some quick thoughts on the Orlando Magic. Yeah, those guys are young. It seems like they have a lot of duplicate parts, to be honest. Cole Anthony, Jalen Suggs, RJ Hampton. I know they all kind of have different games, but they all seem to need the ball in their hands. And Mo Bamba, Jonathan Isaac, Wendell Carter. Again, they seem to have like similar dudes everywhere. I know Jonathan Isaac's been gone been injured for a while so you know his scouting report when he was in college was really impressive i think his comp for some people was like kevin durant but you know that gets thrown around a lot so i haven't seen him play so i don't know how great he can be health is always important but um i do like franz wagner though franz wagner he went number eight after the Warriors took Kaminga at seven, and he was definitely a guy that was being talked about for the Warriors to take, somebody who could be a quote-unquote help now guy. I think he's like 6'10", 6'9". He could play inside out. He could obviously shoot. He's solid in general, and he's a good passer. So he's definitely plug and play right now. And he's actually one of those guys who can quote-unquote help now and still has a little bit of upside as opposed to, say, like a Davion Mitchell or Chris Duarte you know, who's like 24 years old when he got drafted. So I think that's a solid piece. I think you'd build around Franz Wagner, Jalen Suggs, and whichever big guys Orlando finds to be developing the fastest. Anyway, the Warriors get Portland at home before launching on a pretty rough road trip. But Portland, man, that's another team. They have a new coach. They <laughs> Their GM was just fired. I think that's a game that the Warriors should take. Portland looks done. I've talked about that before. I talked about it last game, talked about it with Aram in Toronto. It's 
a team that needs a big shakeup, whether that's moving Dame, moving CJ, you got to move somebody. You know, this team is not going anywhere. I mean, they'll likely make the playoffs, but they're going to be a low seed as usual and just flame out in the first round. It's the same story every time for the Trailblazers. So the Warriors, you know, they kind of own them at this point. There's a lot of history there. And like we saw in the last game against the Blazers, once the Warriors got it going, the writing was on the wall for them. So the Warriors are that team that Dame has never been able to get past. And with the squad he has now, it's not going to happen this year either. Again, thanks, Minnesota, for Andrew Wiggins and John the Kaminga, the gifts that keep on giving. Oh, and by the way, just a quick plug. If you go to OaklandWarriors.com, you know, we make some t-shirts. If you're interested, they're on sale and you could get a bigger discount too if you use the code podcast. It's a 10% discount. So might be worth a shot. OaklandWarriors.com. That is another episode of the Oakland Warriors podcast. Be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Feel free to hit me up on Twitter at Patrick Epino, E-P-I-N-O, or at Oakland Warriors. Check us out at OaklandWarriors.com. And be sure to tell your fellow Warrior fan friends to tune in and listen to the Oakland Warriors podcast. It's produced by National Film Society and is a part of the Basketball Podcast Network. And if you're so inclined, please give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts and say nice stuff about us in a review if you're down for that, too. Thanks. That's it. Music in this episode provided by Paper Sun. Special thanks to Paul Amardo for production support. See you next time, and go Dubs.